The build a story option can allow you to create a single floor but can also allow you to create multiple floors from a single DXF. As I go up to the build a story tool um, I have first selected the area where my DXF was. Notice that I have made actual planes in the DXF. This isn't just um, an imported group. Um, it has to be set up this way. And I'm going to set up my dimensions for each of my stories. So I'm going to set these up to 10 feet each and I'm going to do six different stories in here. Um, everything surrounding this area, and I'll show you in a moment, I'm going to hit go on this. And this is going to build my geometry up very quickly. Um, everything surrounding this, when I go to clicking on it, this is all set as a group. And previously I had mentioned setting the other objects in your building. Here we could do an existing building that we have. We could start to look at something like a facade study. Um, going into the VE, you can set up that you are actually adjacent to additional structures and account for that as part of your analysis. Um, but this can very simply, when we go up here, um, we're going to set this underneath our groups. And that first group, I'm going to, when I bring this into the VE, I'm going to have this considered shade. So how is this, how are the buildings um, affecting my particular structure by being in this context? I don't want them to be analyzed, so I want to make sure that I don't set them as room surfaces or whole rooms. So I'm going to set these as shade, and I'm going to hit save on here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is find rooms. Now that I have my model, I um, just want to make sure that I am in thick-walled analysis. So we want to go in and see and find these actual spaces. I'm going to go to set VE room analysis options. We're in thick wall and I know that my thickness is going to be less than two feet in all areas. But there are some things to be careful on that. Um, if you have plumbing chases or different things, don't go to something so deep that you end up having some small closets or different areas actually get cut out. So once this is saved, I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to find my rooms using thick walls. It's just double checking on my settings here. And it's going to run through and find all my different surfaces. I'm going to just move my toolbar back over here. Now that we've run through and actually analyzed our spaces, we're going to see the spaces are going to be part of our analysis, um, meaning that these are going to be analyzed, um, are going to show in blue. Anything that's coming in as shading is going to show in yellow inside of SketchUp. You can also control your rooms from here and start to see wh which spaces are where. So we'll know which particular name is assigned to which space. If I want to rename these, um, I can also start setting up my building parameters here as well on a room by room basis or on a whole building basis. Now we have all of our rooms saved. We have set up our location and other details under the room properties menu. We have also set up our details, um, other important details under the building properties menu. Once I sort of exit out after my find room properties, my model is going to go back to the state that it was inside of SketchUp. So you don't have to worry about losing any of your materials or any of the details that you have added or adjusted for a visual model. And you have saved all of your appropriate details and then you're going to move into the software package that you're working, whether it's VEware, um, working with the toolkits, or working in the full virtual environment. Also, I do stress that it's very helpful here to go through both our help sections and some of the help sections on our website for more information. Um, when it comes to modeling in SketchUp, your white papers are going to be essential. Same thing inside of Revit. Um, your modeling is really going to enhance or detract from the quality of your analysis model. If we want to look at what this model would look like inside of IES, I would just export it here. And you can see that anything shown in green is not going to be part of the actual thermal analysis. Anything shown in the center here, that has translated in and that is going to be part of my analysis. And this is key. We want to make sure that when we do bring things into VE or when we see them on the preview windows, that they're showing up as the appropriate color. You can also look at my preview window here. 
and we essentially have our rooms and surrounded by our appropriate shading devices um, and anything we had in our model and again some of only bring in what's necessary to men too many is never going to help. It's only going to make your analysis longer. Think about what's really needed for the project that you're working on and absolutely necessary to your analysis.